Hi there, welcome back. We're going to be creating your first Nuxt 3 application with Tailwind CSS in this video. So as of this point in time, Nuxt 3 is currently in beta. Nuxt 2 is the stable version and it's a web framework that uses Vue.js to build modern web apps. So you can of course find the article for this video over in the description and it goes along for a text version of this guide. So the first thing to do is to head over to your terminal and we'll type npx n-u-x-i init and then the name of our project. We're going to call this ds underscore nuxt and then hit enter. That will use the nuxt cli to create a new project and as you can see it tells us to cd into ds underscore nuxt and then we can run npm install or yarn install. We'll just use npm for now, so we'll say npm i and hit enter. After a short amount of time, you should find that your packages have finished installing and we want to then install using npm install dash d and we want to install Tailwind CSS. We'll put that at the latest version we also want to install post CSS at the latest version and finally auto prefixer also at the latest version. Then we'll hit enter. That will go ahead and install those three packages. These are required for Tailwind CSS. You can then generate a Tailwind CSS configuration by typing npx Tailwind CSS init dash p. When we hit enter, I'll go ahead and create the tailwind.config.js and the post css.config.js. We're now ready to open this up inside of our editor. So I'm going to hit code dot and this will open up the current folder inside of VS Code. Inside of the project, head over to tailwind.config.js and the first thing that we'll do is I'm going to set the mode to be the just-in-time version. And I'm also going to add a variety of different file paths to the purge array. When we do that, that tells Tailwind to purge any of the files in these directories and subsequently generate the specific CSS for the files inside of those folders. What we'll do now is create a new file and assets styles and styles.css inside of here we'll add the necessary configuration for tailwind don't worry about the unknown rule that you see here and that should be everything for tailwind setup as far as tailwind is concerned but we do need to go over to the nuxt.config.ts and add a final thing to our config we need to point nuxt at the css file that we've added and that'll be the styles.css, like you can see here. And then inside of build, we want to say post CSS, and we want to pass this the post CSS option of our current post CSS config. That was the config that was automatically created when we ran the Tailwind init. Now, hopefully, if we've done everything correct so far, that should be everything we need for Tailwind. And we can go ahead and start the Nuxt CLI to watch for changes inside of the project by opening up the terminal and from within this project directory we want to run npm run dev. You can see that this is now being served from localhost 3000 and when we navigate to that inside of our browser we should see the project that looks something like this. So by default Nux3 doesn't come with a router you have to add the pages folder and when we do that it will actually then include the view router and then any file that we call from within the pages folder let's say we have a file called about which we can go ahead and create so let's create that at pages slash about dot view next we'll go ahead then and create a slash about route so let's see this in action We'll firstly create a template. Inside of the template, I'm simply going to add some HTML. 
and you can find that inside of the description. But essentially, what we have here is just an about page. It has some Tailwind classes. And one thing you may have already noticed is that now we get a 404 here on the right. That's exactly because we created that slash about route. And this now means that the root route doesn't exist, only slash about does. Let's now navigate over to the app.view. And instead of saying Nuxt welcome, let's now say Nuxt page. We can now navigate to slash about. And what we do see is that, of course, Tailwind currently doesn't work because we said assets styles and then styles.css, but inside of the Nuxt config, I put CSS. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to update that to say styles slash styles.css. Now, of course, we can see that our Tailwind changes do exist, and we have a route at slash about in order to create a similar route, but this time at the slash, what we need to do is head over to the pages and create an index.view. And within index, I'm simply going to copy the about page. And instead of saying about, I'm going to say index. And if we now simply just go to localhost 3000, and sometimes we do have to restart the development server. So we'll kill that and say npm run dev again. And when we do that and refresh, we can see we now have index. So that's two pages, the root one and slash about. One problem though is that currently we are using quite a lot of the same styles or rather the same template for both pages. This is where layouts come in handy. It allows us to define a set of HTML, which is essentially the layout that we can use for multiple different pages. So what we'll do is create a new layout. So say new file at layouts, and we'll call this one custom.view. And I'm going to paste in some HTML once again. This is essentially a application that has a header with a nav bar. And then inside of the main, we have a slot component. Now that slot component allows us to put anything inside of that. And whatever we place inside of that specific slot will appear directly there in the HTML. So let's take a look at how we can use that inside of our index page. So inside of index, we're going to come underneath the template and we're going to add a script with the language of TypeScript. And inside of here, we're going to import from view. We need define component and we'll export default define component and we'll pass this the layout of custom and when we do that we should be able to see our navbar here at the top and our footer here at the bottom I'm going to replace the index HTML with a counter so we'll remove this and just paste this in and then from within the define component itself we can add a setup and inside of the setup we can add a ref for the counter starting at zero and this should allow us now to click the plus and the minus for our counter application so that's how we can define a layout using the component we've stated the name of custom but we can also set that to be false and instead of having this HTML here I'm going to take it out and replace that with Nuxt layout. We save the file and refresh. You currently see that there's no default slot. So let's add that in like so. That'll be the same HTML as we had last time. And now if we refresh, you can see that we simply just have the counter. We don't have the actual layout that we created. And that's because we need to add that into the name property. Let's say the name is custom. And when we save that, you should now be able to see the same custom layout as before. And this enables us some other options. So if we go back over to our custom.view, inside of the nav here, we have that H2. Let's, inside of the H2, add a slot, and we'll call this one header. This will allow us to add a header slot 
to our layout and anything we add there will then appear inside of that nav. We'll scroll down to our template and we'll add ourselves a new script with the language of TS. We'll import our define component once again and we'll create a new component But this time, we want to add to the computed a header function that returns this dot dollar slots dot header. This will then allow us to make a v if here inside of this slot. So we'll say v if header. Alternatively, if that slot doesn't exist, we'll say span with v else, and that'll just simply contain the next three title that we had before. So if we go back now to our index.view, this is where we had that Nux layout. We can add a template to the top of that. And in that template, we'll say hash header. That will put this inside of the header slot. And the text inside of that will be counter. When we refresh, we should be able to see that we now have the counter title instead of Nux3. So that's how we add a specific item to the slot inside of a template using Nuxt layout. Another good thing about Nuxt is the fact that it does automatically import all of your components. So let's create a new component, this time at components slash counter dot view. And what we'll do is pretty much paste in that counter component as you can see, we just have the component HTML right here. And then all it is, is that ref of zero assigned to the counter. And then we use that to either increment or decrement. To get this to work inside of the app, we can go back to index.view. We can remove that initial counter. So if we save the file, you can see we no longer can see the counter. But then we can add it by saying counter like that. So by opening this counter tag, make sure you have a capital C for your component name. But it does look like the IDE has actually added that to the view components. So let's remove that. I can also get rid of the setup right here and this import. So hopefully once we've removed all that, we'll still see that we do have that counter, which we can increment and decrement. Now you may find yourself in a situation where you want to lazy load that component. Now the benefit of this is of course that it's not attached to the main bundle and thankfully with Nuxt it's super easy to lazy load a specific component. All we have to do is prefix the component name with the word lazy and hit save. So you should try and lazy load your components where possible, especially components that aren't yet on screen but are reactive to maybe doing a specific action. So that's how you create a new Nuxt 3 application. Here in this tutorial, you added Tailwind CSS to that app. You also created a brand new layout. You created some different pages, components, and you also looked at lazy loading said components. Don't forget, there's a written version of the tutorial over at developer.school. Hit the subscribe button to stay updated. And until next time, see you then.